Welcome back to our video series on the play framework using Scala. We left off last video with a little error. So we had written a test here that was supposed to run our go to our task list and click on the username and give it a value, click on the password, give it a value. Uh, and I realized that offline I made some changes. Uh, and we ran the test and it failed. Okay, now, which leads to the question, okay, why did this fail and what can we do to fix it? So once this fails, if we scroll to the top, it actually has an informative message for us, as errors often do, uh, at least hopefully do. If you're using a good language and good tools, the, the error messages are more informative than not. Okay, so in this case, it's saying uh, web element password login uh, not found. Now we have an ID for password login, uh, but I get the impression that this is an issue where it is, so the click on definitely checks for ID first. Clearly that's not the case here. So because we've passed on, clicked on the password login, we should hopefully get around that error and password should find our right password. We'll find out later if that's not the case. Unfortunately, if, we've, if we have to change the names to longer names, then we have the situation where we have to go edit our controller. Uh, here again, we could argue that that was something we should have done earlier anyway. Using those the same name for things was probably a bit sloppy. So here's our new error message, element input type password name password is not a text field. Indeed, it's not. It's a password field. But here in the code on line 14, we said that it should be a text field. Great. So I just type that in magically. This raises the question, what are the different things that we can specify here? And how do we know them? So as is often the case, the answer is, let's go to the API. So if we go to plays documentation, you can browse the API. I'm going to go to the Scala API. Now, the one thing that I have to help direct me here is the fact that text field works. And if we look over here under the member results, one of these, the one browser per suite, is one of the elements that we are inheriting from here, okay? So, or mixing in. So we've brought in this one browser per suite so we get to use all the things inside of it. So text field was based upon, is coming from this one browser per suite, which leads to the interesting question, well, what else is there? In particular, what is in there that might work for a password? And actually there's a, uh, I feel like there was a short list somewhere in the documentation, but when I look at this, I'm like, yeah, that's probably under the letter P. Okay, I don't know exactly what it's called, but there's a good chance that the password field is something that starts with P. It's actually not the full password, it's just PWD field. So if we come back into here and we change our text field to PWD field, and then we run our test, Hopefully now we get all green because it can find that. Excellent. Okay, so it did. As I mentioned before, I'd actually kind of like to check to make sure that I'm on the right page. And since we have the API up here, uh, it's worth looking at, uh, at what we can do here. You know, there's a, a nice list of methods or yes, that we can call on this. I kind of like the find. Okay, it finds an element that matches a query string. Okay, so we can use CSS style query strings here. Uh, there's also find all. So whereas this, the find just gives us an option. Maybe it's there, maybe it's not. The find all would find all elements of it. If we only wanted the first of something, we would get back that element and we could check things. So if I want to make sure I'm on the right page, 
what's something that I could search for here that would be potentially unique that would uh, that would tell me something? Well, I only have one H2 element and it has the text login. So one of the things that I could possibly do when I first come here is to just search for an H2 and that gives me back an option. So I am going to for each on that element, we'll call our element E, it's a nice short name for our element, which should be the header to field. And I want the text of that to be equal to login. Okay, so now we have something in here that is actually checking if we're on the right page. And how about we do a test only on task list one spec. There are lots of tests in there and it takes a little while to run all of them. So if we run only one of them, this will go a little bit faster. It still has to spin up a browser and work with it. That's a good sign. Okay, so uh, now at least I say it's, it's a good sign. Uh, I didn't actually check that the H2 existed in with this test because if this returned a none, then the for each didn't do anything. Um, so just to get around that possibility, let's find this and say dot is empty must be false. That'll make me feel a little bit better. Uh, okay, so this comes down to we have a submit in here and that should take us to another page. That should take us to the page with our tasks. Uh, true was not equal to false. Interesting. Um, I have a hypothesis on this. The go to jumps to a new page, but it might take some time for it to actually be there. Okay, and this is something that we would normally have to do after the submit. One of the other elements that was in here is a call to eventually. Okay, and the eventually takes a by name argument in the version that we are going to use. And it's basically saying this is something that should wind up eventually being true. because it might not be true immediately. It's possible when we go to a page, it takes a while for that page to load. And so this is kind of like putting a script at the top of a page when the page hasn't loaded in and you try to get elements and they're not there. So we have to wait a little while for that to happen. The fact that this is pausing like this, there's a nice error of Code to uh, code pass to eventually never returned normally. Okay, so I get to go look at this. Oh, we're basically at the end of time for this video anyway. So we'll figure out what's going on here and make sure that we can get our H2s to verify that we're on the right page before we do these things. In some ways, I actually feel fairly confident because as we saw, we got errors when the password login wasn't there. But I still want to verify that our H2 has a uh, exists and has the text login inside of it. So we'll come back and we'll work on that and then we'll look at what we can do after a submit as well.